Hello you, welcome to Geekism and welcome back to Pinewood Hills. We get a little bit more done this week after last week, uh, which is good. Uh, although it's a little, still a little bit shorter than I would like and a little less done than I would like. But uh, it, it is for an organised reason this week. It's actually the wife's birthday, so we're going down to London for a few days. Uh, so I'm trying to get all my recording squeezed into a, a couple of days before we go. So uh, not quite as much as I would like to have done this week, but uh, I still think we've made some good progress. Uh, hopefully there'll be a cool vlog coming from uh, London as well. We're going to the Harry Potter uh, studio tour. Um, so I'm hopefully going to be able to get some footage from that. So that'd be cool uh, for the channel in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Anyway, what we're doing today in Pinewood, um, uh, some great feedback from the last episode, uh, especially about this sort of generic-y sort of building, and uh, a lot of people said they actually quite liked the fact that it was dead generic and plain, it looked like a later addition to the park, maybe, you know, a, uh, oh well, we've got some space, so we could probably stick a food thing there, and I like the idea of that, but I wanted to sort of try and tie it a little bit more into the area, so uh, all I've done is gone back and uh, made it look a little bit more like uh, like an IP has come in and um, you know the, the, the food outlet itself, Chief Beef it is, uh, has come in and, and, and tried to spend a bit of money on it and make it look a little bit like it's tied into the area and also going to be tied into what's going to be on the other side of the path so um, eventually on the other side of the path we're going to have a go-kart track, very simple stuff, going to be very very light theming, um, it's actually going to look hopefully look quite boring to be honest with you, it's going to be very very realistic go-kart track in the fact that you know it is it is what it is it's a go-kart track it just has some tires around it and things like that there's going to be no it's not going to be like the pirate one we did the run races we did for uh, Geekopolis um, it's going to be much much lighter theme than that uh, so I thought it'd be a nice idea to try and tie this in a little bit with that so we haven't really changed the building much itself but I've added a few bits of theme in here, some red and white. Uh, we've redone the grass picnic area there to be a sort of red tarmac. Um, and we just add a few very light features here uh, and call it the Chief Beef Pit Stop. Uh, still need to work on that um, billboard at the back there. I'll, I'll hopefully be able to do that once I get back from, uh, from the big smoke. Um, put a space in there and put a wheel. I think that looks really cool. I don't know why, it just it's a bit random, but I think it looks really good. So I'm happy with how that turned out. Um, and then we uh, take a little bit, it just felt like, felt like a little bit too much, too open uh, for that area there. So we're going to add a little bit of uh, detailing in with uh, with a wall there. And then uh, and then replace the picnic benches, but using the uh, the, the metallic ones that, that sort of fit the uh, theme a little bit better. Those barriers, oh, they're so useful. Uh, just, you wouldn't have been able to do that. Well, you would have been able to do that, but it would have looked weird if you'd done it before. Uh, so I'm so glad that those barriers and the curbs are in the game. I'm using them an awful, awful lot. A uh, little bit of detailing here as just sort of like the step into the area. Made it look a little bit like a checkerboard, like a checkered flag, I guess. Again, it's all very stuff, stuff that would be very easy to do, cheap to do. Um, but, uh, you know, sort of ha just to help add that theme. What can we do here to make it look a bit more like a pit stop? Oh, we, you know, black and white tiles here, a few tyres painted up, you know, very, very simple stuff. Uh, they may even be uh, planters, those tyres. Those may, may go back and look at putting some small uh, plants in those, perhaps. And a few oil cans. All this stuff would be bolted down. Um, Want to have a little go at this sign... Um, few people on the uh, the bro nation discord which is a great discord if you're not in it already set up by um mike and john over at bro coaster and um they've uh, it's really it's just a, another another discord to you know there's, there's many that i'm in delay, delay designers and and a few others uh, but it's a really good one they, they they've really got an eye for detail and uh, and realism and things like that so uh, i posted this sign in there and the the comments overall were it's really good but it's a little big and it, it is a little big unfortunately we're, we're kind of limited to the smallest art size art shapes there so i've just squished it down a little bit more and whilst it's probably and still about 20% too big I think we can get away with it just being a feature now you know and uh, also like somebody pointed out in the discord as soon as it's got some trees and other details around it I think it will start to blend in a little bit more with the area uh, one thing I did want to do though is at the moment it was kind of just sort of floating and I wanted to kind of give it a bit of grounding and a bit more realism so we've made this sort of large um, stone uh, concrete and, uh, and metal structure that will hold it up and I, and I think that sort of that uh, really helps uh, ground it and give it a bit of uh, a bit of weight and a bit of realism to it. So here we go, placing in. I'm not 100% sure about these white uh, benches. If I'm totally honest with you, I may go back and make them more of a grey colour. Uh, but we add some um, 
some umbrellas as well and uh, again start to do a little bit of light theming around the back here nothing major to be honest with you uh, I think I actually put a staff room in as well um, I would like the occasional staff members to wander in but because I've turned sta how, um, happiness off so as that um, the staff we want to stay put stay put uh, I'm not sure if anyone will actually ever use it but it, it's there I guess and I suppose if you guys uh, download this in the future and want to have, play with staff you know the, the, the staff rooms are there set up for you um, you know so they're, they're there for you to use um, I think uh, I think it looks quite nice though and I think the uh, you'll see there we've used windows to kind of create like a concrete um, base I didn't want the, the all of that ride there the uh, the, the Gordon coasters just be uh, in the dirt you know at some points you've got to do a little bit of foundation work so uh, that's the idea there you'll see there I'll try put a tree across uh, just to kind of uh, tie that sign in a little bit more and I think it, like I said I do think it works out quite nicely uh, we're gonna take this wooden um, fence across for the uh, the path in between here and the uh, the chair plane but one thing uh, I did want to do is on the actual ride itself on the actual sort of edge of the coaster is something a little bit sturdier a little bit more sort of um, uh, security conscious so we've used these pieces these are in my opinion the best thing we've got in the game to create uh, the impression of a wire fence you know it's one thing we haven't got in the game a lot of people have been asking for it a simple wire fence maybe even some like barbed wire options as well um, that piece there which is I think is a walkway actually a metal walkway that you can turn on its side uh, is the closest thing we've got so uh, we use that a lot uh, in the in the game a few bins and that kind of finishes off that simple backstage area there uh, backstage purely for the restaurants nothing really else it does there uh, moving this uh, bridge across I've still got a lot of detail work to do on the top of the bridge but I wanted to kind of cap off uh, the bottom of it there and uh, actually the bottom of it I wanted to be really simple I did want it just to be a brick tunnel that you're going through on the coaster uh, definitely function and form over style and substance um, it, it, again this is very much influenced by Blackpool there's a few times where some of the wooden coasters go under bridges and they are literally just concrete tunnels um, they're going underneath the bridge more again for necessity as opposed to being a feature of the ride you know at some point they needed to get a path over the top of there you know it isn't the fact that oh the ride's going through a tunnel it's the fact that we need a path they're going over the ride uh, moving on then we're going back to the um uh, the Art Deco Theatre, the, the cinema that we started in the last episode, really wanted people to walk into the building uh, and also really wanted a, a reason to get people over here as well because the only things we're going to really have on this wharf are shops and a couple of flat rides. Um, and they're, they're not great at getting people uh, to the area. Once people are in the area, they'll use them, but um, you know they won't actually really get over there. So one trick... Uh, that a few people I've seen use now is to build a really small little uh, track ride and uh, fill it full of golden um, chests uh, and make it really high prestige. The reason we use the chests is because they are, as far as we're aware, the smallest piece in the game that give the highest scenery rating. They give something like a, one of them will give a Q of 50% Q rating, I think. So uh, they're really high scenery ratings for the size of them. You can pile them all up, make a little grid out of them. Uh, just cover them down. So um, this is a bit, of, yeah, a bit of a, a bit of a funky dodge. This one, but I, I think it turns out quite well. So here you'll see that we just copy a few of those over, chuck some by the queue, chuck a few of them over by the ride. Uh, gives the ride a really high prestige of something like 980 or something ridiculous, uh, and then we can kind of fill in the area there and cover it all up. Um, again, unfortunately, that weird little bug. I thought I'd figured out the problem where the, uh, the the recording software jumps across the second screen uh, occasionally while I, well always while I'm playing the game I'll have something playing on the second screen like uh, somebody working on Planko or I've been watching a lot of Sims builds lately because we're looking to do some Sims 4 stuff soon um, and I think what happened I thought at least what happens was when I move across the second screen to pause or to change the video and come back again the the, the recording software follows me doesn't seem that's the case because I purposefully didn't do that here I, I left a playlist running so that I wouldn't have to go to the second screen while I was building yet the camera still jumped across the second screen that recording software still jumped across so um, yeah I don't really have any idea of that I'm gonna maybe try updating drivers and stuff this week and see if that will uh, solve the problem here I wanted to do a very light interior it's nothing major here we're not actually building the screen or anything uh, I basically wanted it to look good if you're walking down the path and you you can see the open doors and you can just see a bit of corridor so they still end up clipping through the corridor there but I just wanted 
a little bit of something rather than just a, you know an empty space there. Um, yeah, interiors aren't really something I'm focusing on in uh, in this build. Um, purely because it's it's part count that I just I'm not too sure is worth it. There's going to be a point where this build, uh, you know, starts capping out on FPS, and uh, you know, interiors aren't really going to help that. Oh, right, okay, so there's a cut there where we rebuild the ticket booth. Uh, a few people said that the ticket booth will be better off situated further away from the main building. Um, they're often their own little building that somebody sits in. Uh, so I did that there and adjusted the uh, the path a little bit. It's it's a purely for show ticket booth. You know, people will just be able to walk into here like any other traction and queue up. Um, so it doesn't really matter that it's not very accessible. And then here, all we're doing is using the terrain. Um, some flooring as well. I'm basically building a big... Uh, building around the back of this here to cover up that uh, that funky path we've got uh, going down into the ground for people to ride on the uh, the Magic Cats ride, and we've we've named the Magic Cats ride the Pinewood Cinema, so that people have the you know they come out the cinema and they go oh the cinema was really good and things like that. So um, overall, I think it's a, a decent fix uh, for the problem of getting people over here. Uh, last thing I wanted to do is work on uh, the uh, the top of the cinema, um, keeping it quite simple, but uh, but you know with a with a, a, a level of grandiosity, you know a level of sort of uh, grandeur, uh, but still you know keeping budget in mind. This is heavily based on oh my word, I can't remember the name of the building now. It was an art arts um, museum in I believe California, if I remember. I will place a link down in the description to the building that this is based on, but. Uh, I might may well not have time. Like I say, I'm pretty much recording this and then heading off to London for three days. So, um, but it is based on a building. I wanted it to be very sort of uh, grey, uh, you know, based around concrete and things like that. Very cheap materials, um, you know, slabs of concrete that have all been sort of fitted together to create this shape. Uh, but we do have a bit of lighting in there, and uh, I think it actually turns out quite nice. It does exactly what it says in the tin. It's Art Deco Cinema. I think it sort of caps it off perfectly and doesn't go too high as well. It's bearing scale in mind. It's probably going to be the, easily going to be the tallest building in this area, uh, but still, it's you know it's sort of keeping that scale in mind as best I can. Uh, it it does get away from me a little bit sometimes, if I'm honest. Uh, a few lights here. Um, still looking for options. I, I've had a few really good options actually for naming, putting words on there. Uh, one of the really good ones was to use some of the movies that we've made in the movies, which is another series we're playing on the channel. Uh, I thought that was really quite a good idea, so I may well end up doing that. Moving to the other side of the boardwalk here, and I, where the pier is, and I wanted to go a little bit more sort of Blackpool uh, seafront here, um, but still keeping a bit of an Americana feel to it. So we're going back to a slightly sort of old west americana but it's not going to be anything major not really heavy theming um but a little bit we've got that um the western shootout there that we built in a live stream a little while ago and then here i'm building something that i see all the time especially at seaside places but often in their smaller theme parks in the uk as well uh, and that is an old time uh photo booth um, there's one at Alton Towers, I know, I think it's still open, uh, and there's definitely one in Blackpool, and I'm pretty sure I remember seeing one um, uh, a few other places as well. And what these are is you can go in as a family, and you can get yourself dressed up in some flea-ridden uh, garb, uh, you know, sort of corsets for the women, and, and Stetsons for the guys, and they have like a bar setting and you can grab yourself a gun and and a, and a, and a few bottles of beer and they take photographs of you uh, with some sepia um, put over the top of the uh, of the photo uh, personally i'm not a fan of them myself i think they're really tacky uh, but they're an actual institution for this kind of uh, level of park so it's uh, something i wanted to put in and obviously it fits the uh, the americana theme really quite well so um so that's what we're doing at an old-timey photo booth. I've gone, I went online and found some photos uh, that people have had taken, and we're going to add those onto some billboards outside. So uh, again, very much like they are. This isn't actually based on a specific one of these. Um, it's just that uh, it's just based on what I have in my head when I think of this sort of thing. And um, I don't know whether this is a thing elsewhere, but I know people in the UK will be looking at this and knowing exactly the sort of building that I'm building here, know exactly the uh, the sort of uh, the business that this is. Um, it's also I guess our first um, I've actually made these look like actual screens they they, they, they wouldn't be they would be they usually uh, photo frames that are lit up from behind um, but here we've got the screen so we might as well use them uh, place a hat there that ends up going it's a bit too big um, this ends up being our first sort of uh, 
uh, what's the word, dedication building, I guess. Because uh, when I was trying to think of a name for it, something popped into my head and I thought, oh, that works perfectly, so we'll use that. So uh, you'll see that in just a moment, what we call it. So again, light theming, there we go. This is a uh, Mass Bandit's uh, old time photo booth. Obviously, you know, his name lends itself uh, to this kind of thing. You get to use that awesome, uh, uh, I don't even know what it is, bit of metal there that's like a booking bronco. You don't quite realise the scale of this game until you see something like that. I thought that was quite a small piece that sat on top of a roof. It's absolutely huge. But I think you get away with it here. This well this well could be a chain of these, you know, Mass Bandits photo booths. They, these could pop up in different theme parks and seaside resorts and things like that. You'll see there we've added a few uh, pictures of, uh, of real life people um, to put those in. And uh, finally we do just a little bit of detail there where the path doesn't quite hang over. There we go. Uh, so we've got a few bits done. We've, you know, sorted out the restaurant into a bit more of a theme. We finished off the Art Deco cinema and we built Mass Bandit's uh, old time photo booth. Um, yeah, so good progress today. Thank you so much for watching. Here's a few glamour shots uh, to cap off those uh, few areas. Next week, back to normal. Going to have uh, a whole uh, day and a half uh, to do videos next week. So hopefully, should be able to do plenty of them. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, you can give us a like. It really does help out the channel. And if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe. Any thoughts, queries, or suggestions, you can pop those down in the comments. If you fancy a chat, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at John T. Sparrow. If you'd like to join in with the Geekism community, you can do so over on our Geekism Discord server. You'll find the link in the description. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.